Hi, Revive fam. Welcome back to another chat. Now, today's chat, I'm going to share with you a word from God that relates to um, a lot of what we've been seeing uh, when it comes to um, false prophets and um, individuals being exposed um, for being false prophets. Now, let me, before I begin, let me say this. This video is being done from a place of love. Um, and it's not to bash anyone, but it's to inform the body of Christ um, of where things stand. What would the Holy Spirit share with me about two things. And, and this is a two-part word. The first part is for the body of Christ um, as a whole. And the second part of this video is encouragement for those who are apostles, who are prophets, who are missionaries, who are teachers, those who God has not, not self-proclaimed, but for those who God has chosen for these specific roles. So um, let's let's just go ahead and jump into this. Um, I will say this is different from um, any word that the Holy Spirit has given me to share with you all. And I will admit at first, I was like, um, I, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with, with giving that and even not even knowing how to share it um, in a way that, would be received with love. And that's why I prefaced the video to say, this is from a place of love. And I'm sharing it um, from the Holy Spirit because God is love. Even when he, um, when, when there's conviction, when he corrects us, he corrects us out of love. He doesn't do it with the intent to hurt us, but with the intent for us to see whatever it is we're doing that's not aligned with his word and that we repent and turn away from it and that we come into the light, that we come to him. So this word, two parts, um, let, let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing the Holy Spirit shared with me, and, and this is, um, this is Bible based. Everything that he shared with me came from scripture. So the Bible talks about how God called different offices in the body of Christ. And let's go ahead and read Ephesians 4, um, seven, verses 7 through 11. And I'm going to read from the contemporary English version. So Ephesians 4, 7 through 11. And before I start... The title of this chapter, Ephesians 4, um, in the contemporary English version is Unity with Christ. I want you to think about that, unity. Right now, we're in a place where we're, we're really not seeing unity because of um, how the enemy has allowed people who are really not called or chosen um, by God to do exactly what they're doing. Some people are getting up and maybe their intentions are good, but what they're sharing is not from the word of God. It could be based off of feelings. Um, it could be based off of what the world is doing. Um, so unity with Christ. I want you to remember that when we start to see confusion and chaos, um, we know that God is not the author of confusion. So when we start to see it, we have to quickly identify, okay, God does not bring confusion. He does not bring chaos. He does not bring strife. So let's jump into Ephesians 4, 7 through 11. So verse 7 starts by saying, Christ has generously divided out his gifts to us. As the scriptures say, when he went up to the highest place, he led away many prisoners and gave gifts to people. 
When it says he went up, it means that Christ had been deep in the earth. This also means that the one who went deep into the earth is the same who went into the highest heaven. So he would fill the whole universe. Christ chose some of us to be apostles, prophets, missionaries, pastors, and teachers so his people would learn to serve and his body would grow strong. So let's go to verse 11. I want to I want to hone in on that. First two verses, Christ chose. When you're chosen by God, there's a difference of you doing it yourself or you deciding, oh, I just want to share this versus Christ choosing you. Remember the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. We're all called to be an example of Christ. We're all called to share the word of God. We're all called um, to walk in right standing with God and to be an example to others of Christ. But few are chosen. Everyone's not chosen for certain assignments. And when we read here, it says Christ chose some of us to be apostles, prophets, missionaries, pastors, and teachers. So his people would learn to serve and his body would grow strong. If you're chosen for one of those offices, the fruit you would see, the fruit you will see is that the body of Christ will grow strong. Read Ephesians 4.11. So we know that Christ chose individuals to walk in these specific offices. Apostles, prophets, missionaries, pastors, and teachers. So now that we know that, let's jump over to 2 Peter chapter two, verses one through three. So I want you to go back. We know God has chosen certain people for certain offices, but we also know that in those offices, what we're seeing now is that there are some people who were not chosen by Christ. There are some people who are just getting in and teaching false doctrine and not really, um, they're not sharing the word of God and being effective and being obedient to what the Bible says, where these people in these offices will help the body of Christ to grow stronger. So when we look and we see that there are people who are on these platforms and we don't see where the body of Christ is being strengthened, we're seeing division. We're seeing how people are, um, lukewarm. They have one foot in the world and they have one foot, foot um, uh, in God because they're not being taught God, biblical based, the unfiltered word of God. They're not being taught the doctrine as God says it. They're kind of sprinkling a little things here, a little worldly this here and worldly that there, or um, they're, they're sprinkling some of their feelings or what they've been through. And we have to stick to what the word of God says. So when we talk about false teachers, Second Peter chapter 2, 1 through 3, and I'm reading from the contemporary English version. It says, sometimes false prophets spoke to the people of Israel. So as we're seeing this, this isn't the first time. This is not something new that we're experiencing. False teachers will also sneak in and speak harmful lies to you. But these teachers don't really belong to the master who paid a great price for them. And they will quickly destroy themselves. Get that. They will destroy themselves. They may be speaking and you may be seeing them on platforms and it looks like they're thriving and it looks like, you know, they're, they're uh, speaking the word of God. But the thing is, 
We're all individually accountable for what we do on this earth. And when we leave this earth, we have to answer to God. All of us, whether you've accepted him or not, you have to stand in front of him and answer for what you've done while you're on this earth. And that includes if you've gotten up and you spoke in false doctrine and you're leading people in the ways that are not of Christ, you will have to be accountable for your actions. So it says, and they will quickly destroy themselves. Many people will follow their evil ways and cause others to tell lies about the true way. They will be greedy and cheat you with smooth talk. But long ago, God decided to punish them and God doesn't sleep. So it goes back to saying, whatever it is you're doing on earth, if, if, if it's not right, if you're not chosen, if you're not leading people in the ways of Christ, you have to answer for that. So let's skip over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 13 through 15. I'm reading from the English Standard Version from this um, particular chapter. So 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. And it reads, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness their end will correspond to their deeds. Get that. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Meaning, if they're not operating under the direction of the Holy Spirit and they're doing their own thing and they're leading people astray and they're leading people to the world's ways as opposed to God's ways and they're leading people based off their emotions and their feelings and they're leading people based on greed and they're leading people based on um, uh, influence. They'll have to, they'll be judged by that. They'll be judged by it. It says their end will correspond to their deeds. So whatever they've done on earth at the end, that's what they will reap. And again, I know that may sound harsh. Those last two scriptures, 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3, and 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, but this is the word of God. And God wants us all to understand this so that if we are not walking in what he's called us to do, we need to turn away from that. Ask God to forgive. It, it, even if, if you're watching this and you know that you have a following. You have people that um, you're shepherding and your intentions may not be right. Repent today. Ask God to forgive you and turn away from it. It's better to do it now instead of carrying on the rest of your life while you're on this earth. And you end up at the point, 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen 13 through 15, where your end will correspond with what you've done on earth. You will be held accountable. And I'm not just saying you, even for myself, when I came 
on this platform, it was because of the direction of the Holy Spirit. I'll be honest with you. I had no plans, no intentions of coming on YouTube to share the word of God. I didn't want to get on a camera and talk to people. I didn't like public speaking. I still really don't like public speaking. I, I, I really have to, I, I know when I get on here, it's because the Holy Spirit has given me the strength to do this. I don't come on here on my own and do this on my own will. So even for this platform, I'm very cautious on what I share. If it doesn't come from God, I'm not sharing it. I'm not sharing it. And if I do have something to say, you will hear me say, well, it is my belief or it is my opinion. I am not going to be accountable for leading those to a place where God does not accept. God does not honor. Because if, if we do, apostles, teachers, preachers, pastors, missionaries, when you're leading people astray, God holds you accountable. And I'm going to keep it real. I don't want to go to hell for anybody. I don't want to be accountable for leading someone to demise, not to see heaven, not to see Jesus. So for the body of Christ, I know we, we see a lot now with, um, especially on this YouTube platform with videos of, um, oh, this person is a false prophet. This person is a false prophet. This person is a false prophet. Now, for those individuals, um, I'm not even going to go there. Okay. Let me say this. When you see something that you may question, 1 John 4 tells us to test the spirit. Now, I know people say, oh, well, test the spirit, test the spirit. But let's, let's just pass that, pass that particular verse. Let's go deeper. Let's read 1 John 4, 1 through 6. And you are, I'm listening, as I'm sharing this with you, I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. He's given me what to share, but I'm, I'm being cautious and listening to what he wants me to tell you as I'm sharing this video. So 1 John 4, 1 through 6, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. So when we're seeing this stuff, it shouldn't be a surprise to us because the Bible tells us, this is going to happen. We're going to see false prophets. We're going to see false teachers. We're going to see where people have been doing stuff for years and now they're finally being exposed. The Bible says this is what's going to happen. Verse four, little children, you are from God and have overcome them for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world. So pay attention to that. When you're listening, be very uh, discerning on what an individual is saying. Are they aligning with the world's thoughts? Are they aligning with what the world says is normal? We have to remember, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. 
there's a difference between what God, God says is acceptable and what the world says is acceptable. So if we find ourselves in a position where we are aligning with the world, we got to check, we got to check ourselves and make sure, okay, hold on. What does God's word say? Are we aligning with the word of God? And if the answer is no, turn away from it. I don't care how good it sounds. I don't care how good it makes you feel. Turn away from it. Verse six. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now, I want to hone in on verse six. Verse six says, we are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. So... If you know God, and when I say know God, I don't just mean, oh yeah, I gave my life to Christ. Knowing God means having an intimate relationship with him. You know his voice. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. But the only way you will know his voice is if you're spending time with him. If you're spending time in the word, not just reading the word of God, but you're meditating on the word of God. When you do, you will know his voice. You will be able to discern whether or not someone is telling you something that aligns with the word of God, with your father's voice versus something that someone's just telling you um, just to, 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 to give you the itching ears, to please your desires, to please your flesh. When you have relationship with God, intimate relationship, when you're spending time with him daily, when you're listening to him, you will know his voice. It's like a child. Think, think of a, a little child who parent, okay, when a child comes into this world, it's not until the child is around the parents all the time that they know the parent's voice, right? If someone else calls the child that is not the parent and, they, and, and they're calling this child's name, the child probably isn't going to respond. But... If the parent calls the child's name, the child's going to turn around and look because guess what? The child is around them all the time and the child knows the parent's voice. So when the parent speaks, the child identifies the voice because the child is around the parent all the time. The child has a personal relationship with the, with the parent. The child has an intimate relationship with the the parent. And that's no different than our relationship with Christ. If we're not around him, we won't know his voice. But when we're taking time to spend with him on a regular basis, we will know his voice. And when we know his voice, we'll be able to discern whether or not someone is not giving us the true word of God. So now, let's jump into the word of encouragement. Um, for apostles, prophets, missionaries, pastors, and teachers. And this is what, this is the scripture that the Holy Spirit gave me. Mark chapter 15, verses one through five. And I'm gonna read from the contemporary English version. And in this 
in these particular scriptures, this is when Pilate was questioning Jesus. So Jesus is, um, he, he's being questioned by Pilate about who he is. Are you really, who are you? Are you the king of the Jews? You're walking around saying this is who you are. Are you, are you really the king of the Jews or are you, you, are you not the king of the Jews? Because now everyone's saying you're a blasphemer. People are saying that, you know, you're, you're a false teacher. And I want, I want you to listen to that. And if you need to go back and read this, use this as an example, even when you're experiencing times when, um, people may be saying things about you. Um, it takes thick skin in order to operate when, when you're chosen by God in a particular office, it takes thick skin. It is not for the weak. It's not for the faint. So as, so this is the thing. If you know you are chosen and when you experience these attacks, I want you to remember this, Mark 15, one through five. And let me read it. Early the next morning, the chief priest, the nation's leaders, and the teachers of the law of Moses met together with the whole Jewish council. They tied up Jesus and led him off to Pilate. So you got this whole group of people against Jesus. So they tied him up, led him off to Pilate. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? He's questioning him of who he really is. Who are you? Are you false? Are you really who you're saying you are? Or are these people, are they right? Are you a false teacher? So he asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, those are your words. <laughs> the chief priests brought many charges against Jesus. Then Pilate questioned him again. Don't you have anything to say? Don't you hear what crimes they say you have done. But Jesus did not answer. And Pilate was amazed. So here you have all of these people bringing all of these accusations against Jesus, all of these false accusations. And Jesus says nothing the second time Pilate asked him, don't you have anything to say? Jesus says nothing. And I believe Jesus had nothing to say because he already knew that God called him for that purpose. He didn't have to answer to anyone because he knew that God called him to do what he was doing. And the only person he had to answer to was his father. He didn't have to answer to Pilate. He didn't have to answer to um, all of the chief priests. He didn't have to answer to the nation's leaders. The only person he had to answer to was God. So I want you to remember that. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you are being accused, falsely accused. Now, again, this isn't for everyone. This is for individuals who you know God has chosen you for a specific purpose, whether it's an apostle, a pastor, a prophet, a missionary, a teacher. If this is you 
and you ever find yourself in the situation where you're being accused, take a page from Jesus in Mark 15. Just say nothing. You don't have to get on YouTube and, and defend yourself. You don't have to go back and forth with people. And because again, remember, God is not the author of confusion. When we start allowing the back and forth, the bickering, the strife, we're losing sight and we're getting distracted, which Satan, that's what he wants. He wants us to get distracted. But we have to be one up on him and understand that we're not going to stoop down to Satan's level. We're going to take a page from Jesus and we're going to say nothing. But we're going to continue on the journey that God has placed us in because we know in our obedience, we are answering to God. We're not going to get distracted and consumed with what everyone's saying, what people may be accusing you of. Last thing I want to do is read 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I'm going to read uh, verses 3 through 5. I'm reading from the contemporary English version, and I will place all of these scriptures in um, the description field, just um, for you to have a reference to go back. That anybody, if you need a reference to go back to this, please go back to the scriptures um, and, and meditate on them. And if you find yourself in a situation where you are, you know, you're being falsely accused or people are saying stuff, um, making comments, you can't get distracted by that. Because think about it. If they did that to Jesus, do you not think that it won't happen to you? But we have to follow the example of Jesus. Just be, be quiet. Because you know, you know what God instructed you to do. So last scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. And it says, the time is coming when people won't listen to good teaching. Instead, they will look for teachers who will please them by telling them only what they are itching to hear. They will turn from the truth and eagerly listen to senseless stories. But you must stay calm. You must stay calm and be willing to suffer. You must work hard telling the good news and to do your job well. If you have not taken anything else away from this video, from this chat, take this away. Second Timothy chapter four, verse five. But you must stay calm and be willing to suffer. It was written in the Bible for a reason. God knew in this time that for those who are chosen, you're going to experience, you, you're going to experience times where you're going to be accused of certain things. You're going to be called a false teacher. You're going to be called a counterfeit. Now, again, there are some people out here who are, who are false teachers. Again, we just read that earlier. The Bible says in these days, we will have them. But for those who are chosen and you know that you know that you know that God has chosen you for such a time as this, that he's chosen you in the office as an apostle, as a teacher, as a preacher, as a missionary, as a pastor. Do not get distracted, but stay calm and be willing to suffer. I said it earlier. This is not 
being in an office chosen by God, you have to have thick skin. And I know it's something, even on my journey, um, I had to develop that because before, when I first started, I would take everything to heart. Someone said something. Now, it wouldn't stop me from being obedient and coming on and sharing what God told me to share, but I will hold it to heart and say, well, why are they saying that when I know God shared this with me? I know God told me to share this with the body of Christ. I know from confirmation from God that I have to share this. Why are people saying this? But if Christ suffered, do you not think we're going to suffer too? But go back to 2 Timothy 4 and 5. We have to stay calm. As people are coming, as those attacks are coming, they're from Satan. As they're coming, we have to stay calm. We cannot get distracted. We cannot lose focus of what God has called us to do because that's all the enemy wants to do. He wants to, to, um, he wants to overwhelm us with all of these distractions so that we'll get caught up in going back and forth with this person and that person and responding to this person and trying to justify who we are when God has already approved you. You don't need anyone else's approval. You have his approval. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. And know that God has your back. Know that he has your back and that as you walk through this, he's with you. You know what God has instructed you to do. You just stay focused on him. Stay focused on him and not on what the world is saying, not what others are accusing you of, not what others are labeling you. Stay focused on what your father has for you to do. So family, I pray that this word, um, it encouraged, first of all, those who are chosen um, to operate in those roles, in the role of a pastor, a teacher, a missionary, uh, a prophet, a teacher. I pray that this word um, just encouraged you to keep going and not to allow what people say to stop you from running your race or being obedient to God. He chose you for this for a reason. He knew that you could handle it. But you have to stay connected to him. You have to stay rooted and grounded in the word of God and know who you are, who he says you are. So that when accusations come your way, it won't shake you. It won't bother you. Because you'll know, all right, my daddy went through the same thing. So let me, let me walk through it with grace. He chose me for this. So clearly he knows that I can handle it. And he's giving me the strength to handle it. So family... I pray that this word um, was an encouragement and even to the body of Christ that um, as a whole, that we understand that um, false teachers, the Bible says, that's what we will see. And that we have to learn to use discernment. That's the only way you'll know whether or not someone is of God, whether or not they're chosen by God, whether or not God has assigned them for a specific um, office, uh, a specific role in the body of Christ. And the only way you'll know that is if you're connected to him. You have to have a personal and intimate relationship with him. You can't just go by what others say. Um, or by um, just you're looking at all these different videos and you're jumping on the bandwagon with this person and that person. You have to know the word of God 
for yourself. You can't depend on anyone else. You have to know for yourself. Develop a relationship with God for yourself. So family, I love you all. And until next chat, be blessed.